Well, hello, VEST scholars. Welcome to your Module 5 lab. Um, you're going to be exploring how hurricanes work. Uh, most importantly, how they are fueled and from where do they get their energy? Because really, I mean, that's that's a major thing. That, that's a really a major focus or major concept is energy transfer. Uh, when we talk about Earth systems and how does energy transfer from one system to another? Um, and what kind of effects does that en energy transfer have? Uh, one downstream effect of the energy transfer that occurred during Hurricane Katrina was flooding and storm surge. You can see here a part of New Orleans that was uh, very heavily flooded during Katrina. Even houses pulled off of their foundations and moved around by the floodwaters. Uh, because Katrina um, hit a city, New Orleans, that's actually below sea level largely. And again, below sea level because... Uh, because we have decided as a society we want to keep New Orleans where it is and we don't want the Mississippi River to change its delta lobe location. Uh, we have gone to great lengths and expense to build levees and to create a system or set of systems, um, engineered systems that allow this bowl to exist that is New Orleans. It's constantly being pumped out by large pumps on the levees. Um, and originally these levees were built to withstand what they thought were uh, the strongest hurricanes you could possibly have. But in, in, in the end, they gave way during the Category 3 um, storm that hit. And that was Katrina. Katrina is actually, actually weakened by the time it hit land a little bit. Uh, but they've rebuilt the levees, and, and you know, in New Orleans, it will be a better place for it. But uh, nevertheless, the area flooded because of the, the geography. So, again, storm surge is really the pulling in of the water by the storm uh, usually along the eastern side of a hurricane uh, as as it's approaching us. Well, if you're approaching the Gulf Coast, it'd be on the eastern side of the hurricane. So that's where the storm surge is going to be the, the worst because that's where it's pulling it in. Um, anyway, so uh, hurricanes are cyclones. And in the tropical areas, we call them tropical cyclones. And, of course, in the Pacific, they just call them cyclone, cyclones or typhoons. But whatever name you go by, they're still the same they're still the same animal. So um, a hurricane is fueled and it gets its energy from its environment. And I'm purposely trying to dance around the answer to that question because you're going to be exploring that in your lab. But here we have Hurricane Katrina in uh, visible looking at the cloud tops. Uh, and you can see this really well formed eye. And same over here. This is Hurricane Katrina about the same time in its path, but looking at it in infrared. So you can clearly see um, significant differences in the structure of the storm in terms of heat. Certainly, um, as you get closer to the uh, to the eye of the storm, you get significant bands of heat energy that have been pulled into the hurricane, and that's important. So, uh, the, it's getting that heat from someplace. That energy is coming from somewhere, and that is what's fueling the storm. Incidentally, the key, the temperature key, is up here, um, and it's hard it's hard to see, but uh, that's. The higher, the more further the right you go over here, the more the, the, the warmer it is. So to contrast Hurricane Katrina with another storm that was important, that was a big storm recently, or Superstorm Sandy, as it was referred to several years ago. Um, both both were hurricanes at one point in their existences. Uh, Katrina remained a hurricane, and you can see that in terms of these two storms. Um, at, at, towards their end, when they made landfall, they were they were two very different storms in many ways. They still had the same cyclonic wind patterns. They still had really really warm areas within them. But you can see the the interior of Sandy is much cooler than the interior of Katrina and Sandy. And I tried to make these scaled roughly the same size. Uh, Sandy is much broader, almost nine hundred miles in diameter, whereas Katrina is more like three three to three three hundred fifty to four hundred miles in diameter. Still very large, but um, Sandy, of course, brought in a lot of its storm surge from uh, along the northern side of the storm, whereas Katrina was bringing it, depending on where, where it was, but along the northern at first, then the eastern side of the storm. But in both cases, the energy has to come from someplace. And, and Katrina, it's one source, and for Sandy, it was one source, and then it changed to another source. In the case of an extra tropical cyclone like Sandy, it actually comes from the, the the, the gradient that exists between the cold and warm air along a cold front with which Sandy interacted by the time it got to this northern or northerly latitude. So, um, you know, that temperature gradient was important. Um, it's 
for the uh, de- development of the of the storm and the transfer of heat. So it's a barometric thing. Um, here we have uh, a cross section of Hurricane Harvey as as it hit Texas. Or of course, hurricanes this past year, hurricanes are really known for their rainfall. And you can see up here, um, here's the key looking at infrared um, and radar reflectivity and coming together you can you can get an idea a sense of the of where the rains are heaviest within the storms you're looking at the cloud tops and, and the storm itself but um, you know, Harvey had sometimes the way where it was like 40 inches of rain fell uh, it was a very intense storm so and again so what was fueling Harvey same thing what was fueling the storm um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get into Google Earth and you're gonna download um, a KMZ file, which is uh, a version of what's called keyhole markup language file that is geo-referenced data that is specific to, well, not so specific to, it wasn't developed specifically for Google Earth, but it was, Google Earth uses it. Um, but it's, you can find KMZ files and KML files all over the place, and they're a lot of fun. I've imported two here. One is the file you're actually going to use, and that's this, which is just a list of weather bulletins that has uh, some other features listed on it. And the bulletins look like this. And I also imported a sea surface temperature uh, map from NASA Earth Observatory from August of 2005. So you can look at that uh, variable as well. Now, if you look at Google Earth, I'm going to pull it up over here. Google Earth's great. It's a, ge- it's a geographic information system. And you can uh, interact with it nicely. These are your, uh, your, your places that you have loaded at the time. There are also a bunch of bunch of them that come in as defaults, including photographs, roads, and all that. Um, here I'm looking at uh, I'm actually have it in um, uh, a, a different mode at the moment. I'm looking at it in, in a, as if I want to make an image. But if you click and unclick these things, they disappear. So if I go over here and I uncheck the path, it'll disappear on me. Of course, I don't want to do that right now. My computer's a little bit slow, but I'm trying to get it back. But if you click on these bullet on these little dots here, your bulletin pops up, and that's what you need to do during the lab. You're clicking on these little these little squares here. Um, so we get the path to come back here. Advisory. There we go. So some of these advisory positions. Um, let, me, let me try to pick one here. Is these these little these cur- these little icons are different. Uh, if you hover over them. They should splay out. One of these will. I'm trying to find one that will for you here. There we go. And you can go and click on either one of these. In the lab, it talks about how to do that. Okay. So again, you're looking at the information in the, contained within these bulletins. There's the, the speed of the hurricane as it's moving, the category of the hurricane, the wind speed. You're looking at category at the category and the wind speed. And seeing what kind of relationship you can see there, and then also looking at the at some of the other variables going on. What is again? What is fueling this hurricane? Okay, enjoy. If you have questions? Ask your master teachers. But until next time, um, enjoy the lab.